Hi. <laughs> Hi, this is Robin Bremer. And today I'm going to share with you uh, how not to have a sin consciousness. And the Bible calls sin consciousness evil. So here we go. We're going to take a look first at Hebrews 10. Too, and it says it's talking about the sacrifices and it's saying the same sacrifices were offered continuously year after year and it was supposed to make them perfect and if it made them perfect there would no longer be any more offering for sin so right here it says which were offered continuously year by year make those perfect in other words you couldn't make them perfect for then those for then would they not have ceased to be offered in other words if a sacrifice one time would make them perfect they wouldn't have to be offered year after year but because it didn't make them perfect they had to be offered over and over for the worshippers once purified would have no more conscious consciousness of sin in other words right here it's saying being perfect means that you have no more consciousness of sin and that was very important and so it's talking about how every year they had to continue to offer sacrifices year by year because they would have a sin consciousness for the whole year of everything that they messed up and right here is a definition according to the scripture of being have, having a sacrifice that made you perfect you would have no more consciousness of sins then in Hebrews 9 9 it was the symbol symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered which cannot make him who performed the services perfect in regards to their conscience in other words, what God calls perfect and the reason for a sacrifice is to make you no longer sin conscious because the sin is paid for by the sacrifice. But now let's find out right here. Let's find out who it is that is causing our consciousness to be sin conscious instead of uh, uh, consciousness of a relationship with Jesus. Now the devil is called the accuser of the brother and he's being he's cast down and he would accuse us day and night he would talk to our minds and tell us now look listen you broke the first commandment the third commandment and the fifth commandment today or get look what you did last night do you think you're good enough to pray or he would say look at you have a covenant and in the covenant it says that you can't break this commandment you have to do this and you have to do this and he would accuse us of sinning and what allowed him to do that is the law the law makes it possible for him to uh, for him to accuse us of sin because without the law no sin is imputed to us but with the law and when we break the law then Satan comes and he accuses us of breaking the law and so we have a sin consciousness and we cannot be everything God calls us to be because we're thinking of being good enough instead of having a relationship so let's look at um, 1st John 3 8 he who sins is of the devil for the devil has been sinning from the beginning okay sin okay for this purpose sin the Son of God was manifested that he would destroy the works of the devil so what did he destroy? He destroyed the devil's power to accuse you of future sins. And the fact that he accuses us of sins is what keeps us from our healing, from our prosperity, from our wisdom, and from the power that we have. Because we're always being sin conscious. We're always thinking we're not good enough. We've got to work harder. We've got to pray more in tongues. We've got to, uh, we've got to fast more. We've got to, we've got to be gooder. <laughs> That's the word. And this sin consciousness uh, is what Jesus came to destroy. He came to destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil is sin. And that brings sin consciousness. That brought the fall of the animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and the weather and everything around us because of sin. Now, Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, and he can no longer uh, accuse us of breaking the law or sinning because we're in Christ Jesus now. And read Hebrews. 10 2. Now the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us, This is the covenant I will make with them after those days. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds I will write them. 
and he adds their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more now where there is a remission of sins there's no longer an offering for sins in other words one sacrifice for one time is what Jesus did one sacrifice for our past present and future sins before we were even born he died for most of us because everybody alive today was not alive when Jesus was born and died so he died for us before we were even born so he took our sin nature from us and we cannot continue to sin because we're in Christ Jesus our sin is not imputed to us of course there are consequences for our sin you reap what you sow you know you sin against your spouse you commit adultery you, you know you're gonna lose your family your spouse your business all kinds of stuff there are consequences for sin but we can no longer sin because we're in Christ Jesus sin is not imputed to us because Jesus was the perfect sacrifice and Jesus said uh, God said he will no longer remember our sins and lawless deeds no more and he also said that he would write his laws in our heart now he's not writing the Ten Commandments and all the 600 laws of the covenant of the Old Testament into our hearts the law that he's writing into our hearts and minds is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus the law of um, faith the law of grace and the law of love those are the laws he's writing into our heart not thou shall not laws okay and because we have been sprinkled our mind has been sprinkled free from a sin consciousness we have boldness to enter into the holy of holies holies by the blood of Jesus and we can draw, draw near with a heart a true heart in full assurance of faith having a heart sprinkled from an evil conscious so you see Jesus wanted us to be able to draw near to him in full confidence not feeling our, not being aware of any inferiority to him uh, he wanted to restore relationship to us he wanted us to uh, be free of sin consciousness instead to be filled with I have assurance that my daddy loves me no matter what I do say think feel my daddy God loves me he paid for my sin he paid for my sin nature I can't sin I'm free from sin I have no longer have an evil consciousness my mind is now renewed and I think the way God thinks about me I say the things God says about me okay so Jesus took away our sin consciousness which he calls evil and what he wants us to do is have full assurance of faith okay a true heart come into his presence without oh God I'm not worthy oh God help me no he wants us to come into his presence like a child okay nevertheless I tell you the truth is to your advantage that I go away for if I do not go away the helper <coughs> sorry <laughs> the helper will not come to you but if I depart I will send him to you now this is why it's so important to have the Holy Spirit besides speaking in tongues Jesus went away to give you the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit would come and he would convict the world of sin righteousness and judgment of sin because they do not believe me in other words the world is convicted of their sins they have to pay the price of their sins because they do not believe Jesus he's not going around saying you did this 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 and this he's saying no believe in me and uh, you know you have sin and all you have to do is believe in me he's not pointing out all their sins that they've done wrong he's pointing out that they need him then of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more in other words we are now made righteous with God because Jesus went to the Father because he paid the price for our sins he raised up from the dead and he went to heaven and we don't see him in the physical sense anymore because he's in heaven and that is our proof that our righteousness has been paid for and of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged so Satan is judged and he is guilty he is no longer allowed to condemn us to shame put shame guilt condemnation on us which I find is the number one problem when I pray for people shame guilt and condemnation and once people get over that they can walk in God's presence and God's power so the Holy Spirit convicts us that we are the righteousness of God because of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus not our works our obedience or following the law it's all about Jesus so my name is Rob Bremer net is my website and my books are on amazon.com I have seven books on there right now I also have ebooks some of them are free check it out and I hope you get free and I hope you get blessed and set free from the law and into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and I will talk to you tomorrow